Kingdom greetings, you all. I'm coming in to share a dream and the message that God is giving you and your family through this dream. On April the 3rd, I was awakened to a dream where a minister approached me in an intimate way. It surprised me because this man of God moves in signs, wonders, miracles, and great revelatory knowledge in the area of teaching. I responded by saying, if your wife found out what you were doing, it would not go well for you. At that moment, the minister's wife walks through the door. The minister exits a rear door and leaves that door open upon exiting. The wife confronts me about something that she believes I've said about her and her husband and the work that God has assigned their hands. And I denied it because I hadn't said anything. She continued to go on. I noticed her appearance was very polished. She even had on some kind of like rainbow-like makeup and I admired that but the more she kept talking she kept trying to convince me of what I had said and she even mentioned this boutique and the name rang a bell and I said oh I'm familiar with that boutique and that individual but I have not spoken with them in I don't know how many years and I haven't been into that boutique in many, many years. At this point, the minister's wife began to cry. And I said, I really don't know what you're talking about. I said, I have said nothing about you or your husband or the work that God's assigned your hands. I said, if anything, I may have been speaking about some generic things relative to a work of God or a ministry or a husband and a wife, but not specifically about you. And I said, and even if I had, this isn't the place for it. And so she said, well, yeah, let's get out of this room and walk down to another. So as we walked down to another room, when we entered into the room, it was full of all of their disciples. And so it really wasn't the time or the place I wanted to tell her about the advance that her husband had made toward me, but it just wasn't the right time. So I shared generically the similarities between the work that God has assigned our hands and the dream ended. In prayer, God revealed to me two things. The first was that the husband, which is the minister, was actually committing adultery and the adultery that the minister was committing was with mammon with money that he was intimate with mammon actually he had made mammon money and idol deceitful riches and idol and then he showed me that the wife had made insecurity and other people's opinions an idol. This morning when I awakened, God told me to go to Exodus 32. And that's the chapter where Moses stays on the mountain for a very long time. And when he comes back down, he discovers that Aaron had led the children of Israel into making a gold god and worshiping it instead of the one true living God. Moses then intercedes and pleads with God not to kill them. God repented of the thought to kill them, but 
they continued in their disobedience. And then Moses commanded the Levites to kill anyone who worshiped the idol. They obeyed Moses' command and killed 3,000 people. But the thing was, they killed 3,000 of their own relatives. Wow. As a result of their obedience, God consecrated, restored, and blessed this tribe. It's the tribe that we know today as the Levites. As Moses continued to pray about this heinous sin against God, he said, God, blot my name, my Shoda, out of the book of life. And God said, I will not blot your name out of the book of life, but I will blot out the names of those who have sinned against me. In the form of idolatry. Then he reminded him how he would send an angel before him. He also said that he would visit those who sinned and punish them. And then right in between the end, this is Exodus 32, 32 through 35. He said, I'll send a plague on the people because of the idolatry. And as I read that whole chapter, as I got to that point, it was like divine revelation opened up to me relative to where we are today. I know that there are so many schools of thought relative to what's taking place, but what God is saying is that He sends plagues due to the sin of idolatry. Wow. And so if you or anyone in your family has this coronavirus, repent. If you have it, or if someone that you know has this coronavirus, repent. I repented on behalf of the whole nation and others that he led me to. Repent for the idolatry. What have you made an idol? Is it the opinion of men? Is it your insecurities? Is it your fear? Is it the fear of man? Is it the place where you worship? Is it your job? Is it money? Repent. 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 Tear the idols down. Put the idols down. Put every false God down. Every false idol that you're worshiping, put it down. Put it down. When you repent and put down the idols, the virus that is a result of the sin of idolatry, it will be removed. Remove the idolatry and he will remove the visitation of this plague. You must repent. And give God your whole life. He will allow nothing to compete with him. When you do, he will restore, he will heal. Anyone that you know that does not know the Lord, share this with them. Lead them to the Lord. Don't be afraid to tell them that they must put down their idols. Be like a Levite in this passage of scripture and you will be blessed. You will be set aside. 
You will be consecrated as one of God's true priests. I found something so interesting about Moses as I continued to read into the 33rd chapter. His conversation with God went like this. I want to know you so intimately that I stand out above all the men in the world. If I have not called out your specific idol, if you can't say or pray, God, I want to know you so intimately that I am distinguished above all the men in the world, all the women in the world. then you have some sort of an idol. Ask Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. Maybe it's you. Maybe you worship you above God. Hmm. Sila. Sila. Even as I prepared this word, Father wants me to remind you to walk circumspectly before him as your God. He wants you to fear him again. He wants, deserves reverence, reverence God, the one true living Jehovah God. He's holy. Have no other gods before him. Put no other gods before him. Throw down every idol. Receive healing.